Hello, and welcome to the Art of Music Tech. And today's guest is Carl Allen. Carl is a legendary jazz drummer, educator, and record producer who has worked with artists, including Freddie Hubbard, Christian McBride, and Ron Carter, to name a few. We find out what his early experiences in the recording studio were like and prototype gear made for an upcoming signature series products. Well, my first experience in the studio, it was a recording session with a wonderful trumpeter by the name of Frank Gordon. And the name of the record was Clarion Echoes. In fact, the studio was owned by the pianist Fred Hirsch. And, uh, and it was in 1985. And I'll never forget, I had gotten there a couple of hours before. And, um, you know, this was, you know, I was pretty young. And, you know, I had a pretty definite idea of my sound. And, uh, you know, my whole idea was, this is my sound, and, you know, to the engineer, and your job is just to get my sound. And I remember I set up, and, and I had gone out, get something to drink or something, and come back, and, you know, still going to be there an hour before everybody else. And I come back, and he was on the floor in front of my bass drum with a knife, about to cut a hole in my bass drum head. Now, this was 30 years ago, a little more than that. Uh, well, almost 30 years ago. But I, I got an email a couple of weeks ago and said he just got out of the hospital. So um, it was a bad day for him. But no, I'm just kidding. But it was very interesting. Uh, I'm like, man, what are you doing? He's like, well, man, I can't get my sound that way. I'm like, well, no, your job is to get my sound. But, you know, this was me being like, uh, you know, the serious jazz head. And, you know, it's like you, you can't put a hole in the bass drum and all of that. But it was, it was quite interesting. And, uh, but that was, it was at that moment that I said, I need to learn a little bit more about this stuff as opposed to just being vague and saying, get my sound. Well, what does that mean? I had no idea. But that's kind of started that whole thing where I was kind of interested in finding out a little bit more about what goes on in that situation. You know, my idea was never to become a producer. I became a producer uh, out of frustration, really. And uh, at that time, this was kind of at the height of the whole Young Lions movement, you know, where record companies were really focusing in on, you know, if they could walk and they can hold an instrument, we're gonna sign them. And, uh, and so, you know, but my, my, my frustration was that there were a lot of great musicians who were being overlooked. And, you know, I've always been of the mindset that if there's something that you see you don't like, you really have two choices. You can complain about it or you can try to do something about it. And so uh, I chose the latter, which was to try to create some opportunities for other people. But it, it started really from me doing my first record as a leader. And it was for a label in Japan, Alpha Records. And I'll never forget, you know, I'd met the guy in Japan, I was on tour with Terrence Blanchett and Donald Harrison. The gentleman approached me after the concert in Tokyo and he introduced himself and, and he said, uh, Art Blakey told me I should give you a record deal. And I thought I was, you know, the show wasn't around then, but I thought I was being punked or something. I'm looking around like, man, who, who, who you serious? And so he said, he said, well, you know, in speaking with Art, he said he felt like you were the guy who would try to carry on that tradition of trying to nurture and help younger musicians. And so we spoke um, for several weeks, actually, uh, before we actually decided to do something. And, um, and so when it was kind of confirmed that we were gonna record, he says, well, you know, I can't come, so I'm going to send you the money and then you just send me the masters. I was like, cool, what's a master? <laughs> you know, I, I, I had no idea. So. Uh, I had to kind of figure it out as I went along, you know, of, of pre-production and then the time in the studio and working on trying to get a balance and the sound with the engineer and, you know, and of course understanding that uh, producing had uh, so much more to do with just making the phone calls but having a concept and, and understanding the concept from the musicians to the sound that you're trying to get and then spending time really listening to uh, a lot of records by label, for instance, Verve had their own sound. Blue Note had its own sound. ECM had its own sound. 
uh, and CTI had its own sound. So I started asking myself, well, what kind of sound did I want it to want to try to create along with the musicians that I was working with because I didn't want to impose that upon uh, the musicians and, and, and you know having a particular sound may not have conceptually meshed with their style and with their concept. And so the very first time in the studio was really for my own projects and then producing something for Freddie Hubbard and then kind of went on from there. And uh, uh, to date it's, you know, it's been about 74, 75 recordings or so. Uh, a lot of Japanese pro projects and some here domestically as well. But um, it was just very interesting, you know, learning about, you know, uh, different things in the studio from, you know, placement of mics and isolation and, you know, what kind of sound you wanted to get. Did you want to have a more open sound with a larger room where you're using fewer mics or, you know, uh, if you look at a lot of those old photographs, some of those Verve recordings, and even some of the early Columbia recordings, there were only two, three mics in the room, you know? Um, and just trying to figure out what kind of sound I wanted to get for a particular project. So that was some of my early uh, memories of just trying to get started with that. It's Carl Allen, just talking a little bit about some of the gear that I use. Of course, you see these beautiful, Beautiful Zildjian symbols. Now, I know they don't look new, but uh, they're not supposed to look new, but they sound great. Symbols, that's a big part of your sound, big part of your signature. So this is my babies. Uh, so um, then of course, drums, uh, DW, which I think are the most unbelievable sounding drums uh, that I've ever played. And I've been playing them for, for quite some time. So. Um, the Remo heads, and uh, I experiment a lot uh, right here at home. You know, I have a fiber skin on the bass drum, and uh, this vintage A on the snare, and, and uh, just the ambassador coated on the toms. And um, and then of course, uh, Vic Fur sticks. Uh, the model is uh, one that's not yet available. It's my stick that we're, we've been working on. So this is some of the stuff that I use, and then. Of course, other accessories, LP uh, family of, of uh, toys and blocks and bells and shakers and stuff like that. And um, then there's other stuff that I use. You know, uh, I use some electronic stuff, Zoom, uh, GoPro. I love the GoPro stuff. Um, Earthwork mics and just a lot of different things, you know, uh, Apogee Digital uh, for different things. So this is kind of just a... Uh, mixture of some of my toys. This is Carl Allen and you're watching The Art of Music Tech.